I recall like it was yesterday, the day I found out I was pregnant with my firstborn. It was a summer session during my junior year in college. It was a miserably hot and humid day. I remember sitting in a dark, even hotter art history class. I couldn't concentrate. I felt like crying. I was hot, nauseous, and felt plain yucky for a beautiful day in August. I walked across campus to the infirmary where I'd later learned I was pregnant. I walked back to campus. My sister called. Back then, pagers were the popular mode of communication and public telephones were commonly used to respond to a page for those not afforded with the luxury of possessing one of those inspector gadget held, handheld devices. I called her back. She told me she was pregnant. I told her I was pregnant. <laughs> now the race was on to tell us, as to who would tell our mother first. <laughs> After we hung up, I reconsidered my decision to, to share my news first. My news would not be received with much excitement for a few reasons. First, I wasn't married. My sister was. Secondly, I was still in school and had another year to go before I'd graduate. Third, and perhaps most importantly, she despised the father. My sister shared her news. I put in a pen in sharing mine. I did, however, tell my dad, I'm a daddy's girl. Always have been and I expect always will be. He told me I'd have a few days to gather my thoughts and tell my mother, and then he'd tell her if I hadn't. Sounds a little calculating, I guess, but to me, my mother's the type of person you just don't want to disappoint. After sharing my news with them, I remember a few days later sitting in a clinic. I walked into a dimly lit, grim office where I was greeted by an equally dim, grim receptionist. She told me to sign in by writing my name on a piece of paper on a wooden clipboard. Someone will be with you shortly, she mumbled. I sat down. What seemed like hours went by. Then my name was called. Well, a name was called. I had written down my middle name, LaMonica. I still didn't or couldn't move. LaMonica, still nothing. The nurse stood in silence and observed the room with her eyes, then retreated. A few days later, a few minutes later, I got up and left the building. The father had waited outside for me. I told him I couldn't do it. He said, good. We went to a nearby park to talk. It was a beautiful summer day. I felt relieved. Somehow, some way, I knew it'd be okay. This wasn't a mistake. Sure, the timing wasn't great, but I felt a sense of peace, reassurance about my decision. Then I sat on a bee. So much for that sense of peace and reassurance. <laughs> my daughter was born on her due date. Doctors told me less than 5% of firstborns arrive on their due date. It was unusually hot to be early April, close to 80 degrees. She was perfect and healthy. My second or so day home, I had to give her a bath, alone. I put water in the kitchen sink and tested it, and retested it, and tested it again for the correct temperature. I undressed her and placed her in the sink. I was paralyzed. I can't do this. I'm going to drop her, I thought. She's so slippery. I'm panicking. We're both wet. She's naked. I may as well be, and we're both crying. And like the superwoman that she is, my mom appears in the nick of time and saves the day. She takes my daughter, calms her down almost immediately, and gives her an effortless bath. I am thankful. Fast forward 21 years. I'm walking across campus. It's a miserably hot and humid day in July. My cell phone rings. It's my oldest daughter. She tells me she's pregnant. I say, now what? What's your plans? I keep stride as I'm en route to a meeting. I'll tell her we'll talk that evening. As I try to collect myself, I'm taken back for a moment to that hot, humid day in August, 21 years earlier. I feel miserable and yuck. Later that day in my safe place, the shower, I cry. I cry and cry and cry until I'm all cried out, literally. I feel disappointed, angry, heartbroken. The timing isn't right. She's not married. She hasn't finished college. And as for the father, I hadn't even met him. Maybe I'd feel a little better if I hadn't, just didn't like him. But the fact was, <laughs> I hadn't and wasn't justified in harboring any ill feelings toward him. 
the plan is to move forward with the expectancy of a baby. Was this deja vu? Was this how my mom felt? Did I envision life a little differently for my daughter? Absolutely. Do I wish I had a do-over? Perhaps. I've learned that there are essentially two choices one can make in living life. One, enjoy the journey. Or two, don't. <laughs> <laughs> About eight weeks ago, my first grandchild was born, perfect and healthy. What I would like to tell my daughter is this. Enjoy the journey of motherhood, and no matter what, never lose the love.